Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden on a beautiful afternoon. The sun is out, it's really mild, wonderful temperatures and I'm just enjoying this brand new planting that I recently did with you in one of my previous videos here in the terrace garden. But I think it's enough of being lazy because it is a perfect day to take you with me into the vegetable garden and continue the planting there. So how I want to structure today's video is, first of all, I would love to take the opportunity and tour you around the vegetable garden a little bit and share with you what happened in the meantime because a lot of the plants started to grow in really well, a lot has germinated and I think it won't be long up until I can start harvesting at least some first salad crops. Then I also want to plant a little bit. My paprika, my jalapeno plants, they're all ready to finally find their way into the ground. They've been on the windowsill up until this point and they're like crying out to be finally planted. And then I want to introduce three sisters to my vegetable garden. So if you are intrigued to learn a little bit more about that, I hope that you're going to have fun with me in my vegetable garden. Isn't it a fantastic day? I mean, look at it. Clear blue skies, just some cute little clouds here and there. It's perfect temperature. And let me tell you this, the plants love it too, because I was gone for a week. I mean, already more than a week ago. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was for three days in Copenhagen and straight after that I was in Krakow in the south of Poland for a couple of days, which was just a wonderful getaway from here. And the lovely thing is, once you leave and you come back, then suddenly you'd be amazed by how well everything looks. So if we look at the vegetable garden, it works pretty much exactly the same to how the ornamental garden at the back here works. It is a terrace garden. So I leveled it out into three terraces. Um, it used to be like quite a steep slope. And then I came in, all of this was like hand labor. It was all done with me in a spade and I worked my way through here. So there are three terraces and the brand new kitchen garden down at the bottom of the slope, which I'm going to ignore today because nothing is going to happen there. A lot is going to happen here on the second layer. But first of all, let me just show you what's going on here in my raised baths because this was a lovely surprise when I came back from a holiday. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, really, I put these tiny, tiny little salad crops in here. They were basically a set of leaves and now look at them. They really start to make already little salad plants and this is ridiculous here in the front where you can definitely tell by the color of the leaves kind of distinct it starts to change color to its purple tone so I'm really excited about that here this is my zona I hope I say it right it's supposed to be a Japanese salad kind of like a tastier version of a rocket I tried one leaf because I really had to know how it tastes and it's delicious it really is comparable to rocket but I have to say nicer so I, I really think that in the coming years, I'm going to continue growing uh, the Maizona cellar. Then I just have like some picking salad, the red varieties, two different, which I always love just for a little accent of color. Then I feel this was supposed to be Am Choi, but looking at it, the leaf looks so different to the pack that I'm a little confused now if it really is, but whatever it is, it tastes good. I also tried to leave here and I thought, oh, if you do summer rolls, like the Vietnamese summer rolls for summer, this is definitely going to give a wonderful flavor to those. And then here, two rows of cilantro started to germinate. And you see, I already have some first true leaves. So I think maybe three weeks from now and I can get in here and start harvesting. So the next two raised beds from a distance, they kind of look empty, but things are germinating in here and it looks quite promising. So I have basil in here. This is green basil where the germination is all right, not fantastic so far, so I might have to re -sew. Then I have a row of red basil where clearly the germination is a lot and a lot better. Then I have chives. It kind of looks as if I have grass in here or lawn, but those will be chives, so really lovely, can't wait for them. Then I have two rows of parsley, then I think another row of my zona. And then I have a mystery where I'm not quite sure what I actually put in there. I think it is amaranth. I think this is amaranth where you harvest the leaves and prepare it as spinach. So I'm going to have an eye on it and see what happens. Then in the third raised bed, this is where I grew carrots last year. It worked really well. So I do the same thing again. And I have quite all right germination, I would say. It doesn't look too bad if you look at the situation here. And the reason why it is a good idea to put carrots in a raised bed is because Carrots might be tackled by the carrot fly, but carrot flies, they only hover, I think, maybe 30 centimeters above ground level. And these raised beds are a lot higher than that, which means that the carrots are definitely safe. And last year, I harvested really amazing carrots out of here. Some more salad, so three more radicchio and two more, uh, three more salad crops. 
uh, because I just had them left over. They were still in my windowsill and I thought, you know what, you can never have enough green, so I just put them here. Then I have this little greenhouse here, which is basically just used for my Rebecca plants because I really wanted to lift, that, lift them off the ground because Rebecca are always threatened by slugs and snails and so far it works fairly well in here. Then I have strawberries here, which to be fair, I mainly grow them because of that. Look at these blooms, aren't they fantastic? They make me happy every single day when I come here. I remember from last year, the strawberry, like the fruit itself, it was sweet, but it was not where I would go like, oh my God, what an amazing strawberry. So it was just okay. Then I've got some more amaranth here, which is for the ornamental garden. I still have to pot it up. Sweet peas in the back there. And here I have my cannas, which to be honest, I think I haven't overwintered them right. I think next year I really have to do it a little different. Some are still in the greenhouse and they look better. So the red varieties, they kind of started to push through. The peach varieties, ooh, I'm not really sure. Maybe there is a loss on the cannas, but I'm going to have an eye on them and keep them watered. So let's see. Worst case, I'm going to buy a couple of new ones. But what we do now is I'll take you with me now here onto the last layer because this is where most of the work in today's video is going to happen. This is the second layer of the vegetable garden and this is really where I grow most of my vegetables. Like last year I was harvesting so fantastic out of here. So I really hope that I can keep up with this entire momentum. Here in the front I have some red pointy cabbages where you can always see already the leaves. They have this red vein in there so definitely it's going to be red. Some of these might also be purple cauliflower by the way because I unfortunately mixed up my labels at one point which is not so smart. And then I have some potatoes in here because last year I grew potatoes in this area. And even though I thought I cleared the entire area there's always one or two potatoes that you forget and now they kind of come back. So that's what it is I guess. Here you see some really tiny beets that I just put already into the ground and here in these trays you see some first things that I will plant today with you. So I'm not going to tell you too much about it because I'm going to work my way through bit by bit. Then here are some of my dahlias that I potted up and they're just waiting here and then this is an area where I need to take my dahlias out today because all of my paprikas and jalapenos are going to move in here in this really cute a cold frame because I think that they should be happier in here just because of the extra amount of heat that they will receive. But my dahlias, look at them. Don't they look fantastic? Really happy. Well, some definitely were tackled by slugs and snails. So I also have to make a little inspection of slugs in here. But in general, I think that they look really cute. If we continue walking, there are, you see some kind of feathery leaves. These are my first fennels that I already put into the ground. And you can see if you, if I get a little closer, can you tell they start to look already a little bit like fennel? I'm really happy about that. I harvested fennel last year really well. So this is one of those plants that works fantastic here. But there will be more fennels here, but not today. I'm going to keep this area vacant too. Then here are more beets. So I did a little bit of a direct sowing and you can see that in general germination was pretty well if I say so just look at them teeny tiny leaves and plants still by the way you can also eat the leaves from beets because they are a fantastic salad and they already taste a little bit like beets I really love it to make sure that I know where I was sowing I put the bamboo canes here just as a reminder for myself not that in a moment of delusion by accident I might just do some weeding and then I'm going to weed all of my lovely plants here is an area where I'm going to sow some beans, but not today because today I will focus on this lovely trellis here. This is where I'm going to plant a lot today. I've already prepared the soil. I came in with some lovely fresh garden soil from the garden center, which is specially made for the vegetable garden. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is really focus on the back here and share with you what the mysterious three sisters actually are. When it comes to the vegetable garden, I really love to take a lot of inspiration from all different cultures and see how do people in different areas of the world actually grow fruit and vegetable. And by doing so, I came across something which is called the Three Sisters. This is a growing technique that goes back to the Cherokee Indians in America. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. I grow all these three varieties in my garden. So why not try and see it on my own? Because those are three plants that thrive very happily next to each other. So the first one is a sweet corn. So sweet corn grows 
very fast. It requires quite an ample amount of water. But the interesting thing is that the actual fruit or the vegetable of a sweet corn only appears roughly one meter above ground level, which means that there is quite a long stem where nothing happens. So in theory, what you will do is you will put climbing beans at the base of your corn so they would just like climb up and then produce their fruit at an area where the corn does not produce any fruit. Here's the thing where I'm going to change it up a little bit because my favorite bean is called Blauhilder. It's dark pot beans, really wonderful. They freeze well, they taste amazing. When you boil them, they change color to green though. So don't expect that you're going to have like dark purple beans on your plate. They are vigorous though. They can grow up to two meters if you allow them. And even the trellis that I built here, one point will be too small for them. So they would just start hanging over. So I know that they are maybe just like going to kill my sweet corn. So I think that they will grow happy next to each other. But the third plum that actually comes into game is squash, which I don't Grow, I grow courgettes here. You can also use a pumpkin, but my pumpkins that I grow are very vigorous. So I'm also just like, if I put a Hokkaido in this rather small area, the Hokkaido is going to go bonkers and crazy everywhere here. So I think a courgette is a better option. This is a graffiti courgette and it is a pretty size control. So this is a variety that is going to grow to such a size maybe. So it's not like one of these like massive huge varieties either. And why you put squash at the base is that they produce big leaves and the leaves, they cast shade on the ground. So when the hot sun comes in, the moisture is not just gonna get out of the soil. So the leaves make sure that the moisture stays in the soil. So it's not going to dry out so fast. So this is in theory how the three sisters work. I told you the right plants and I also told you that I'm going to change it up a little bit. So the sweet corn variety that I'm gonna grow by the way is called Guccio. I hope I say it right which according to my research is a really nice variety. So before I came in here, I dug a lot of nice fresh soil under, I told you, and everything is nice and lofty, so I don't even need a shovel for planting. So what I do is now take my plants, tip them over, nice cute root system already, and put them in the ground, dead level exactly to how they were in their containers. There are a couple of plants that you would actually plant a little deeper. For example, tomatoes. So if you have tomatoes and if they have their third set of true leaves, this is when you might want to put them out in the landscape. But if you do it, you can really put them in the soil deeper at least to the germination set of leaves. So just under leaf, underneath those because they will lose the germination leaves anyway. So no good. And it is better for the tomatoes. The beans, this is going to be very easy. So all I do now is, and this is where the support system comes in very handy. I always take two beans and I always put one on each side of the bamboo can, push it in a little bit. Beans, they need darkness to germinate. So push them in at least double the height of the seed into the ground. So roughly one to one and a half centimeters because you need to know how your seed actually germinates. If you have fine seed, normally this is the one that does not want to be bur uh, buried too deep because they need sun in order to germinate. While beans, they do need a little less sun. So here is a corn in my back, which I don't want to squeeze now. Oop. So this looks all good. I'm just going to do the first row. So they are all in the ground. I'm going to do the second row in a second. Lost a bean. And then let's have a look at the courgettes. You know what? I don't even need my gloves because the soil is lovely. So I want to put two in here, actually. I have to see where the second one goes. And the first one goes definitely in here. So I can already come in right here. I haven't prepared the soil too good, apparently. A little dense, but still good. And I always come in with some organic bone chips because the organic bone chips, they break down to nitrogen and quintessentially, they will feed your plant. You know what? It's too I'm going to grab a shovel because I don't want that the plant doesn't sit in the ground well. One second. Back with a shovel. That's what I needed. I was too optimistic thinking that I don't need one because I prepared the soil. But apparently here I haven't done it so good. Sometimes it's funny because normally I have sandy soil here, which is very well drained. And this is a reason why, for example, potatoes, anything that's kind of like a tuber or a bulb grows fairly well here. That looks better. So come in with some more organic bone chips. And now let's tip them over. 
Ah, lovely root system. See, the roots even hold it in shape already. So let's break them apart very, very gently. Try not to disturb the roots too much. Ah, oh, that looks good. Love that. Very happy with these. So they grow in here now. And then the next corn gets into the ground. See that the soil is lovely and lofty again, also with the corn, some organic bone chips. And with the corn, you see some difference in sizes, by the way. So they come from indoors. They are a little bit bigger. And I might want to tease some of these roots so that they not pop down in the end. Lovely, that goes in. Very level. What I'm going to do is plant my way through and then I'm going to show you where my paprikas go. As I was planting my way through this sweet corn here, there is one thing that popped in my mind where I thought, oh, this is actually really good valid information that I totally forgot to mention. And this has to do with pollination. So if you want to grow sweet corn in your garden, make sure that you grow only one variety of sweet corn because corn gets pollinated by the wind. And if you have different varieties, you will have cross-pollination and then you're really not going to harvest what you expect to harvest. And even if you have a big garden, there needs to be quite a big distance apparently between the two corn. So I never grew different varieties, so honestly I can't really tell you how uh, dangerous it is. But I think here in my garden, I literally here I'm at the back of a garden, so if I wanted to have another variety of corn, I should probably plant that in the front garden, which I'm not going to do because, I mean, I think sweet corn is enough. I don't need to have ornamental corn. So at one point I'm happy with what I have. But doesn't it look cute? I really love that the area starts to fill up now. So far we're just weeding here. And I mean, the weeding is not always, I don't mind to do it, but it's not like one of my preferred jobs in the garden. This is also why the ornamental garden is mulched in so heavily, but that's it. The last sweet corn and a little weed is in the ground. Oh, this area looks good. Make sure that there is a good amount of spacing in between your plants because corn grows to quite a big, good size. Um, and also it's a good idea to put the corn in the back somewhere because you put it in and then you don't really do anything up to the point when you harvest it. So I hope when they're ready, I can share a harvest video with you. But I think now it's time to take care really of my paprikas. I really had an amazing germination with my paprikas and with my jalapenos this year. I always push two seeds in a container and all of them germinated and all of them made a fine little cute pair of plants. So what more to ask? We're really wonderful. Flavored them. So I have three paprika and one jalapeno. So I have paprika heating. Well, I think that they will be spicy. Then this is jalapeno where I just said jalapeno yellow. So let's see. Then I have paprika capri. And I have paprika, I can't read my handwriting. Maybe it's orange, <laughs> I'm not really sure. This is going to be a surprise and I lie to you because here in the last pot, there's just one plant. So my germination was fantastic, but one. So the orange, I have one plant less, actually two. But all the others, there are always two plants and there, so I'm really, really happy with that. I really didn't see that coming. There's a reason on why I'm going to put my paprikas now in a cold frame because last year they were up there in one of those raised beds. And the problem that I have is paprikas are sun lovers and they love heat and they want to bask in the sun. And the Baltic climate isn't quite famous for that. So it really took forever for my paprikas to ripen. And I harvested them, I think like really end September at one point, like in the last second. Chilies were no problem. They were fantastic, really ripe early, but paprikas were difficult. And last year I had varieties that produced a little bigger fruit. So this was absolutely not playing to my advantage. So this year I chose varieties that produce smaller fruit and they should ripen faster. So what I want to do is always put how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so 
I'm going to put five in the cold frame and three outside in front of the cold frame because I think by doing so I'll manage to get all of these in here. At one point they will grow out of size. I really have to keep the cold frame open as it is now. So I just secured it now with the bamboo canes. I could actually see, my goodness, sometimes it's so smart to have these extra things. They have these hooks here. I need to uh, readjust them though, because like this is not going to work. But at one point, yeah, I have to uh, fix it permanent to keep it open the entire time. But still, it is sort of a microclimate in here. So I think in the long run, this is definitely going to be quite beneficial. So how I'm going to plant it, and this is pretty much similar to what I just shown you, they have wonderful root systems if you look in there. I really should have basically planted them out maybe last week. This looks fantastic. I haven't watered them coming into the video because uh, I want to water everything very thoroughly once I'm done. So again, I come in with my very famous organic wood chips and just put these plants in the ground. Here, I'm going to plant them a little bit deeper to how they were in the container, maybe just half a centimeter, just to anchor them a little bit better. Because you could see on some of the plants that the roots are really just like coming out here at the base of the plant. And this is an indicator where you might go like, hmm, maybe it's a good idea to put them a little deeper. So just that you see what I'm actually doing already here. This is how I do it. So this one is definitely one centimeter deeper. But there are quite some big winds sometimes here on top of the dike because there is west, which means sometimes when the wind travels from west, it really hits the dike. It's totally open here. So plants have to be toughy. So yeah, this is really how the game works. But I think that this is a really cute area. Let's see how many plants I'm going to get inside of here. At least I want to make sure that all the varieties, at least three plants are here. <laughs> see? inside the cold frame and then I'll see. So what I do now, plant everything, water everything in very thoroughly and then I'm happy that these plants are finally out here in the landscape. Isn't it looking cute? The vegetable garden really starts filling in with all of these cute little plants. I'm going to give you a closer look in a second. One thing I have to mention though, and this is concerning the setup and the layout of the vegetable garden. In my back there is the ornamental garden and I laid it out in four terraces and they are all very sturdy, safe and sound. And here I made the decision to only go with three terraces, which means that each terrace is quite steep. And unfortunately, this one here, the soil is shifting. I already came in with a big amount of additional beams, everything on the outside, and they're also bending. And then I came in now with metal spikes two weeks ago, but I can tell that everything was shifting even more outwards. So I hope that I'm even able to get the big beams inside. So I'm really not sure in the long run if it can stay like this or if in winter, I'm just going to basically change the layout and yeah, change this terrace into two terraces so that it won't be so steep. I'm not really thrilled about the idea of it because I know that this is going to be an entire week project, but I have to, I have to take a look at it. Unfortunately, this is what it is, and this is when you change your garden. But let's focus on the positive. So things are looking really cute. All my dahlias here, oh, I can't wait for the moment when I really plant all of them with you. So the paprikas and the jalapenos, they really fill up this entire space here, which is really cute. I put them quite dense, to be honest, because I mean, at one point space is limited and I know what more is gonna go in this area. And I thought, well, they don't grow to such a massive size here. 
like I know it from last year so I think I'm going to get around with that. They're going to make a nice big bush though. Then here on the right I'm going to fill up this entire area with fennel. On the left I want to put some celery plants which are still in my cold frames in the other side of the vegetable garden. They're already looking very promising. Here everything is watered in and now when everything is watered in the soil looks so much nicer and darker. It's not like so grey and powdery and you can really see all of these beautiful beet plants. And now this entire area here, my three sisters, the corn looks nice. I have a lot more corn than last year. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be a good harvest, some corn for the barbecue, two courgette plants. So fingers crossed Lux and Snell's are not gonna find them too fast, but I have two more plants just as backups. And then here the trellis with the beans. What I will do though is set up another trellis, exactly the same here with a yellow runner bean. So I'm going to have more beans here, but that's it for today in the vegetable garden. So, so happy with the progress that I'm making in this area. That's it for today from my garden, but that's not it for me from my garden today because I'm still gonna put some potatoes into the ground. They sprouted, they look fantastic, but I'm not gonna do a video about it because I did a video about this topic last year. So if you are new to my YouTube account, just check out the history of my videos because there are a lot of different content videos spinning around vegetable garden, ornamental garden, in different garden areas. I do garden tours, so I'd be very happy if you subscribe to my my channel. I'm also very happy if you give me a thumbs up for today's video and I would love to welcome you next time around in my garden. So take care guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.